Vince McGrath comes in. It's on its way. It's there. The miracle of Chris. Going with a kick to full forward. Cloak, not quite. Blair, Collingwood, back in front. The seed, he delays the give. Franklin, this is... You know what? It was another round. It was another round of exciting action. It was another round of predictable action. It was another round of unpredictable action. And just like every single round, I still have no idea what the hell to expect from the season besides Melbourne winning games and Port Adelaide getting blown out of the water. My word, just taking a look at the the North game and then the West Coast Eagles, man, I um Oh, it's not sitting pretty, especially when you want to get blown out. And then go clubbing a little bit later that night. Uh, definitely not the best of looks. But, you know, who am I to judge? Because uh, they're a footy team and they've won one game. So, I, I guess you could kind of just phone them in as finalists. But, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in to our round breakdown for AFL Round 8. And uh, definitely got to be a lot to get into, especially because... Breaking news right before we go on. Leon Cameron is resigning after this round. And as a Giants fan, I'm not going to say I'm happy. I'm not going to necessarily celebrate. But it definitely does put a smile on my face. But Coach Donnie, how are we feeling after round eight of the AFL season? Uh, I'm like you, as soon as, as soon as I think I figured out, there, there's always a curveball or two that gets thrown my way in. <laughs> And, and, to, and to say that this breaking news less than 20 minutes before our live stream goes live, it, a little bit more to talk about, but it's definitely right. fascinating. I think a lot of people saw this kind of on the wall, especially a few mm -hmm. rounds ago when we had talked about the fact the club had both agreed to stop contract negotiations, which as I would, as I, kind of thought the entire time went um i'm thinking this is more uh wanting to talk to cameron anymore more than the other within vice versa so i, I think yeah. this was kind of the writing was on the wall unfortunately for that one but yeah just interesting round um, some some man I mean, so much news coming after like like you said so the whole the, the whole club interview and then the fines and all that and, and then the fact that you had people coming out in the club. Some of these players would have been suspended, but they don't have enough players because of injury and COVID protocols. So, man, when it rains, it pours in the West Coast Eagles, unfortunately. So, oh, imagine not being able to they, suspend someone because you don't have enough guys on your roster. <laughs> much. So it, it it leads to a very interesting year for the potential wooden spoon wooden spoon run because as 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 um, putrid as North was. West Coast wasn't much better, so it almost for this interest, in, intriguing run to the wooden. Who who's going to uh, and I this way? But who's going to suck more? <laughs> no, no, that's essentially what it is. It, it's a very impressive. We'll coin it the suck off between the West Coast Eagles and the North Melbourne Roos. Oh boy, I. I feel so bad for them. I feel bad for. Well, I feel more, more bad for Ruse supporters than I do West Coast. I think, or maybe maybe you should feel worse for West Coast because they actually had expectations this season. Well, kinda. They were pretty screwed by the in, in round one. I guess for West Coast, you go from last year where there's a lot of people saying you're going to be you know grand final contenders, and now you're uh, losing by almost a hundred. <laughs> I said it at the start of the year. I said, I, I thought this was a possibility with West Coast yeah. injury, everything that was kind of happening this year. I, I kind of said it. I thought West Coast could be in the wooden spoon argument. I, I, you know, right now, the only team that isn't wooden spoon argument that I put in there was Hawthorne. And if Hawthorne used these fourth quarter follow, they could be down there with those two quite soon. Rather than later, uh, uh, they got a couple of wins. So I think, I don't think that's going to mm -hmm. be a possibility. 
I, I kind of had West Coast down there. I thought with the injuries, the age profile, Which is the such lack, a bummer, the lack man. of young talent. Yeah, uh, just the injuries. They they came into the season with the injury bug, and then COVID comes through. It's like they they just keep triple whammy. Unfortunately, so this is a West Coast team that honestly, so you look at their list and you look at the players that are on there and you should be winning, but they just they can't keep everybody on the. And that was absolutely killing them right now. Can't keep players on the field. Can't even keep them on the bench. And you can't keep them out of nightclubs. Um, not the best of combinations right there. But what we got for you guys is uh, definitely going to take a look at, at some overreactions, uh, coaching-wise as well. Also, Melbourne-wise, North and normal, nor Central, just just play Melvin. Just, just plain, you know, <laughs> vanilla. It's we're going with vanilla. All right, uh, we're going to take a look at the Leon Cameron news, of course, and um, some big grand final news that's going to have some people happy and <laughs> a lot of vocal people, not so much. <laughs> and we're going to wrap things up or uh, kind of taper off with things. Uh, talk about the most disappointing so far, uh, most disappointing team so far this season. A scary team that can emerge out of the bottom twelve. And a team that is currently in the finals, but definitely should be worried. But of course, I'm your host, Ross Allen, joined alongside by the best in the business, Coach Donnie. And uh, we definitely got some stuff to get into. So might as well just get into it, ladies and gentlemen. First off, if you're catching us live, thank you so much. If you are not, you can catch us every Wednesday night at was 8 o'clock Eastern over on Twitch and YouTube. Um, so go check us out. Links are over at the fourth and long.com or hit us up on our socials at fourth and long media on Instagram and Twitter. If you're catching us on the podcast version over on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Rumble, anywhere else you're catching us, really appreciate the hell of you. You guys are amazing. And for you Aussies, you are 1% away from being a quarter of our listeners that make up um, or at least our audio downloads. So you guys are definitely a huge chunk. So I definitely love you, especially if you're taking some time every morning, maybe get a little coffee. Do they do tea? Is tea or coffee bigger in Australia? Uh, coffee tends to be the biggest in Melbourne. And that for those of you okay. that are listening that want to catch this again live, if you don't catch it before, this live 10 a.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time, That's one. 9.30 Australia, 9.30 late time i can never remember what there's yes. and if i remember correctly it is 8 a.m perth or western australian time for perth so for those of you australians that maybe didn't catch this live that want to catch this live next week those are the time frames when we usually go live and just a heads up ross i'm not sure if you see this on the youtube but uh, currently our youtube thinks it's ufc 279 recap and it's updated don't you, worry. You know, so. don't you worry don't you worry it's updated <laughs> You know, the funny thing is how right. it is, I'm stupid when it comes to technology. I haven't figured it how to change it before streaming. I know how to change it when you start streaming. So I'm just quick. At least we fixed it because I was looking at it and I was going, UFC Okay, just refresh your feed. You're fine. Recap. Hey, like, but if you, are, if you are a fan of MMA or want to be and you want to listen to our UFC 274 breakdown, go ahead, check us out at thefourthlong.com forward slash MMA. Fantastic segue there, Donnie. Really appreciate the plug. But we're going to start things off. Um, as long as, so grab your grab your coffee from Macca's. Um, put a little bit of Vegemite on that biscuit because we're going to break into things. Um, the We're going to start things off with are overreactions and we we're going in hot this uh this round um first things first want to talk about is the west coast or the western bulldog situation currently is they're obviously not in a hor they're not in a horrible spot they're definitely been in a bit of a disappointing spot and aren't performing the way that we thought they would before the year um injuries definitely have not helped that at all um right now if you take a look at the ladder they're sitting right there at 10 um just four points out of it um trailing behind collingwood 16 who's at nine the richmond at 16 who is in the eighth spot uh, but they have um they've gone Two of they um, two and three in their last five, and um, most recently lost to the struggling, but apparently starting to surge Port Adelaide Power. But with that being said, Donnie, uh, statement number one for round eight overreactions is that good old Bevy is on the hot seat. Oh man, uh, 
I saw this on the rundown sheet, and I, and I at first I thought this was a typo because I was looking at it going back on the hot seat. I, I'm not sure. I, I think this is an overreaction. Mm-hmm. But the West Coast's major issue has just been the injury bug has like it has never hit them before. I mean, their their key defenders are down with being out. Cordy having injuries, then they lose their the what many people could argue is the top. Australian rock and Tim English um, at the time of his injury. Hunter out with, uh, with that leave away from the club due to some, some maybe some mental health issues. So it's just, mm-hmm. he, he has injuries everywhere, injuries or people not playing in every single place that he can. And I just, I don't feel like the doggies have played as well as they had. Now, again, he slipped down to, after being up top of the top of the ladder for most of the year, but they still get to the grand final. So I, I'm I'm not going to panic too much. I think he's on the hot seat, but it is one of those where does the question start getting asked if this round, if this round you have a Collingwood team that also has, has had the man has had the man flu run through it wild, which has left them at times, not knowing how many players are going to be in this week or not. Mm-hmm. That this is, this is almost a month the doggies to kind of keep their season afloat when it comes to trying to make the finals considering you look at them on the ladder yeah they're a full game back with and behind calling with percentage so so even this win only draws them even with calling only draws them even with calling what at nine and then you have richmond at eight so the bulldogs have a little bit to do and they're going to need a little bit of help because they have to make sure that they win more than they lose and just got to hope that St. Kilda, Richmond, Sydney, Collingwood, those teams in and around that area stumble a couple of times and give them that chance to get into the final. So, no, I don't think Bevel is on the hot seat. I think this is no. Mm-hmm. But change over the next couple of rounds with a couple of losses could definitely make his seat get a little warmer um, than it is currently. I guess it's just an interesting thing that I want to see because kind of comparing the – I don't want to call it outrage, but the the disgruntlement, I guess if that's a word, towards the head coaches is um in I'm comparing that to the Ken Hinckley situation, the guy that started off um uh they started off was 0 in five and now they've won their last three. Ken Hinckley was really on the hot seat. There are a lot of fans, especially poor Alex Borges, calling for his head essentially. <laughs> um if you definitely if you saw the Twitter replies, it was not a pretty scene. Uh but it doesn't feel like there's been that same discernment against um against a beverage here so are those situations comparable or is it just because he didn't start 0 and 5 but they still have the same record uh, i i could see a lot of uh, likenesses to this i think the issue is is that the western bulldogs didn't fight they didn't have mm-hmm. in the season yeah so they weren't at the bottom of the ladder with uh uh 60 at 65 percentage points after five games and footy to the point where they were barely scoring and when they weren't scoring enough they were and they were getting absolutely plastered um on the scoreboard so i can see comparisons i think kinkley a, a little bit of it also is the fact that port adelaide is a very is a very kind of tight-knit club it's very because because of its connection to the sample kinkley's kind of an outsider like like and mm-hmm. i know i've discussed this with a that there are people that still believe Hinkley has never been accepted, shall we say? But he's never as the coach. Like he's got a little bit, a lot shorter leash than say a Port or a Port Adelaide great. Both of the Magpies are power. Like they're going to get a lot more leash. It, 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 Hinkley's a Victorian, so Hinkley's not from the sample. He didn't play for Port Adelaide. He's he's kind of he's an outs. Okay. So I, I look at it. I think he's on a much much shorter leash when it comes to it. Now the good thing is back these last few weeks, they're starting to look good. They're starting to get the chances that um, big Charlie Dixon could be back as early as this round makes a lot makes me kind of think that I think Port Adelaide might smoky in the bottom half of the of this uh of this uh ladder but you need to start looking and truly that danger team that could jump several teams and find themselves in that bottom part of the final 
three to four rounds. Absolutely. You really definitely a team that you don't want to count here. And speaking Charlie Dixon, I don't know if you guys got this, but there's a fantastic picture taken um over the uh, for the last round with uh Dixon and Fantasia. And I know that there's is a size discrepancy between the two, <laughs> but this picture may either Charlie Dixon looks like he's um bigger than Mason Cox or Fantasia looks like he's a little midget. It's uh it was a fantastic angle. <laughs> I don't know. I just found that really funny. But uh, Charlie Dixon definitely is a guy with uh, quads to make any man jealous. I'm coming after him. I'm. I need those. <laughs> but moving on. <laughs> Same number two, the 2022 North Melbourne Ruse are the worst team in league history. Oh. <sighs> <laughs> I still believe this is an overreaction because this is still very early. Because I, I, I did a little yeah. bit of research before we went on here. And when uh, there was a longest there was a long run where St. Boons for like six or seven consecutive years in a row. Um what decade was that? Yeah, St. Kilda at, at one time lost nearly fifty games in a row. So I'm not the, oh. sure if I'm going to – when, when they first came into the VFL, and then the other the other one that I've heard uh, that a lot of people talk about. Oh, so this was a little bit ago, though. It, well, a little bit. The closest the closest yeah. one that we could we – could, Spitz Roy, um, who eventually merged with Brisbane, became the Brisbane Lions, ninety six went 1-21 and, and had a 49.5 percentage at the end of the season. So – Right now, they have as many in North as Fitzroy does. They're still a long season. And you said just 49.5 percentage points? 49.5, yep. In the, in the so AFL. So the, the Ruse are sitting AFL, at 55.6. Yeah. So they're about 6 percentage points off. If North loses out, they can rifle them. <laughs> Well, oh. and you also got to look at West Coast. You also got to look at West Coast. And West Coast not, is oh. not out of the woods yet. West Coast at 52. I mean, they're 50, they're Two, they have only won one game. Now they're going to get some reinforcements as this year goes on. I think I think West Coast will I think West Coast will get a couple more games. So I, I think it's North like that. But man, when I saw that Fitzroy record of one twenty one with a forty nine and a half percentage, <laughs> oh, like man. it's hard to argue that's not one of the worst. Considering I, I think they were also a team that got beat one time, two hundred and thirty nine to something. I, the score was it was absolutely ridiculous as I was What's the last time put up 200 points? Oh. Yep. It's been a while, right? I I don't remember seeing that mm -hmm. since I started watching. Oh. So, it, so it was it was very interesting to look up some of the records is it somebody somebody in the Saints in in, in a 100 game stretch were 2 in 98. You know what? So it's kind of I'm, hard to I have, I'm gonna say this is I'm gonna say this is an overreaction because I think right <laughs> again we're still early in the season. So yeah. North Melbourne could pip a couple more wins and make this moot in the long run. But it is an inch it is a very interesting conversation because but I, I think we also gotta look at West Coast. Like I said, can they get some wins? Because if they don't, they're <laughs> they're not tracking much better, unfortunately. I am because the their upside's kind of a little bit more. Luckily, the the Eagles have an out where yeah they're losing, but they're also not it you know they're not full strength. The Ruse are Injury, losing, COVID, and yeah. this is their best team essentially that they're putting out onto the field, or at least eh, eh, I'm not sure eh, if this actually, is best because they don't. Well, Ben Cunning, Ben Cunning, better than West Coast. And he's I out. Guess. He's out. He's out with. He's out with testicular cancer, unfortunately. So. Yeah. You know, well, maybe they're better than West Coast, best. but also that's not saying a whole lot. <laughs> this this is this is oh. very true, and I've also seen it too. Because they brought up the fact their delisting list is they've North Melbourne has delisted something was like twenty one players in the last two seasons. So the fact that they are with it, but also on the club as well because they dropped a mm -hmm. lot of players. Including guys like Mason Wood, who's over with St. Kilda, having a pretty darn ha having a pretty decent season. Um, so it, I look at it as it's, this is a little bit of a, a young list that's going to go through its growing pains, but a little bit of the club kind of 
setting their team up to fail a little bit, which I hate saying that because North Melbourne is a very prideful club, but they've put these young men into, into the opportunity, into a very bad situation. And even to the point where Jason Horn Francis has stopped negotiations. He has one more year on his contract has to do through, but the fact that he ended contract negotiations is not a good look for North Melbourne because I know both Port Adelaide and Adelaide are very, very keen to South Australian back onto South Australian soil and into their team, including I even saw somebody threw up that said, if you're a North Melbourne fan, would you take Josh Rochelle in two first round draft picks for Jason Horn right now? Would you would you take as as if you were the list manager at North Melbourne, would you take Josh Rochelle, the number six overall pick, the first round draft picks and future picks for Jason Horn Francis in this upcoming offseason? Because you may not be able to resign him, and if you lose him and if you lose him for free, you get nothing out of it. So it's it's a very interesting I think that's a hell of a trade, to be honest. I don't see him resigning. Don't see him resigning. So you might it's as well still, make that move. It's right. still early. I'm, I, I, I don't want to jump again. There's going to have to have a lot to happen to change his mind, though, is a thing. That trade is definitely agree. the safer option. Definitely the safer option. If I'm north, I am not risking losing him for free. Absolutely not. Uh, I mean, you have... You're bad, but you still have <laughs> you still have stuff to lose. <laughs> um, I, I think I, the I, end I, of the story here is... Uh, Roos fans, I'm so sorry. <laughs> that's all uh I, I like i said we'll have to see it'll, it'll be a very interesting uh, off season especially does north melbourne try to see the writing on the wall and try to get ahead of this or not we'll have to see. maybe they're confident back they can get a few um agents to sign with them and, and then maybe it um on its head a little bit a lot. Do a, and do it yeah but you just never know. Sometimes you bring in a couple of good free agents, you get them in the right spot, they get a, you get a groove, and you win a. Jason Horn Francis sees the writing that you're on a positive thing, and he resigns. So, again, a lot of things still to go, but it's not good signs at Arden Street for North Melbourne right now because it's it's just not looking good. This this that is not a good vibe going going into another very difficult round of footy this week. To say the least. Um, and speaking about very good footy, let's uh, flip things off. A uh, um, last statement is concerning the other Melbourne team, and that is the Melbourne Demons. Um, but statement number three of our overreactions, and I think this was definitely a little bit closer to being a non-overreaction side, is that the Demons are not the most feared team anymore. Uh, as much as I want to say this isn't an over. This 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 isn't an overreaction. I think it uh -huh. is because yeah. I, I I'm gonna say I hate saying it. I don't think no. Melbourne's even playing their best footy yet. Legitimately, mm -hmm. I do not. I do not think mm -hmm. they are. I I legitimately I think they are sitting on neutral, if not gear one of six gears that they can. They have even. So you're really not going to read into the yet. last few performances. Is is that what I'm hearing well, there? I I don't I don't look at. This last round, they played a better team in St. Kilda and still pretty mm -hmm. much dominated the game. I mean, St. Kilda yeah, had its awesome. moments. I mean, the third quarter, I think the third quarter, St. Kilda finally kind of, I, I, I think St. Kilda fell into the trap. Oh my God, we've got to change our game to make sure that we don't get blown out by Melbourne instead of just going. Like, Hawthorne had to change because Hawthorne was severe, severely outclassed talent-wise. St. Kilda, I thought, was much much closer talent wise again melbourne is kind of on a, in a stratosphere of its own when it comes to scales and stars but i still thought st kilda had the abilities in certain sections to make melbourne think a little bit mm -hmm. and Kilda panicked they overthought it they tried to play the kick mark, keep it away from a lot like what port adelaide did and kind of play kick mark and try to keep it away from Melbourne. And Melbourne just said, okay, we'll just wait till you stuff it up and then we'll we'll make you pay for it. They'll and score boy, essentially. Yeah. And then but then, but then the funny thing is when they go to the third quarter, St. Kilda went, you know what, stuff it. We're probably gonna lose this. Let's just go for it. And that's when made a battle back. That's when they started mm -hmm. catching 
They started playing fast footy. They started using the ball. They started attacking the, the defense a little bit better. They were getting they were getting marks inside 50, and they cut the deficit down. The problem is... Do you really is, think that is, the Demons were afraid, though? No. Oh, no. No, no, no. No, yeah. the Ds just kind of... The Ds just kind of they played their game. They, they played... They played... The, again, I don't think they're out of second gear yet. They're not even at full strength. They're playing their best footy, which, if I'm a Ds fan, is both encouraging and disappointing because they're not playing footy. Honestly, believe they will. So lose, they will. I think they will lose the game this year. I don't think they're going to go undefeated. As dominant as they've been, I don't think they're going to be undefeated. And honestly, if I'm a D's fan, I want that. I do not want an undefeated team going into the finals because no, I a lot of times the top team, if you go in too confident, you get nipped. I mean, look at Colin, look at calling what Collingwood did to Richmond in 2018. Everybody thought there's no way Collingwood's going to win this game. I mean, Richmond is just far superior. Look what happened. You get one star, one night, have an amazing game, and a an entire season's results basically are left moot because the best team in the entire league, the entire season, out in the pro. So. If I'm the Melbourne Demons, I don't mind not being at my best. I'd rather be at my best come finals time. And in some situations, I think a loss will be good for this D's team because it will make sure that they don't just paper over any cracks that they have. Not that they have many. They have very, 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 very few flaws on this team. But still is feared because everybody knows how good they can be. And this, again, the scary part is we still haven't seen best Melbourne yet, which is terrifying. That's a horrible thought. <laughs> Honestly, I I guess I was, I wouldn't say worried about Melbourne, but I definitely saw that th over the last few rounds, this is a beatable team, um, which they, they still are, but the way you put it, it definitely, um, you're right. You're right. This is a team that's still makes mistakes while they play and then they still win by 40 points or so that's um <laughs> the only game i was a little bit worried about was um two rounds ago against hawthorne um i guess that's the, that's the most beatable they felt all year that's the most um mortal they felt all year but also a lot of factors going to that one that's uh all right, let, let's see here. Remember, they can't, remember uh, the caveat, no, Jack, no Jackson, no Petty. They, they were down They exactly. were down five or six guys. So, it, so I want to see, if you had to guess right now, um, who do you think they lose to first? So I'm just going to, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to run through their schedule, and you're going to stop me when you think that they might actually lose that game, okay? Or the even they are. Likely, the team most likely to beat them. Yes, um, exactly. So, West Coast. North Melbourne, no. Fremantle, no. Sydney, Collingwood. Uh, see, see, here's the thing. Fremantle okay. can. I okay. don't think they will. Fremantle can because Fremantle is very much built like Melbourne, but just a, mm -hmm. just a tiny bit differently because they don't have the massive superstars in the midfield that – Do you think Frio or Brisbane it, has – in style of offense has a better chance to beat the D's defense? Honestly, I think Brisbane has the offensive abilities to damage Melbourne. The issue now is, is that McSteen, Danaher is injured, Hipwood's injured. Mm -hmm. That's the I guess thing right now for fully, me. Both teams fully healthy. Let's let's make that. Both teams here. fully healthy. I think Brisbane and Geelong are the two teams that, for me, in the regular season are the most dangerous in the home away. The most dangerous teams because they have two mm -hmm. big full forwards, and after May, there's not a ton of size. To guard the size of the, the the full forwards that you're going to that you're going to see on these two Brisbane team on these two on these two teams, honestly, Brisbane unfortunately in this first in round fifteen when they play them first, I don't think they're going to be fully healthy, so I, I have a hard time seeing that. Honestly, and I know they've not played as well, but I think Sydney's ball movement if they play quick and they use mm -hmm. their pace and speed, I think that could. Get in trouble but again their youth in in, a, in a, this year has nipped them in a couple of games especially this last month against but uh, honestly i think round seven the cats game again in round 17 i think it'd be interesting you will see charlie dixon 
back for Port, and I think Port will be much better round only a scary game for them. And then Bridge three is definitely another one. Um that I who extend Dan all back because that gives a lot of headaches to Melbourne because Weaver and May can't both sag off their mid defense. So it'd be very interesting to see. But I think Smokey is Carlton. I didn't have the way as as Carlton's midfield is, and if Harry McKay and Colonel are going well, that is matchup nightmares. The only thing that scares me about Carlton is is that defensively, again, this is round 22 I'm looking at, defensively mm-hmm. right now, Carlton is terrible. They are still showing yeah. weakness on that back line. I think by round 22, that is mostly fixed. So I, there, there are opportunities for the Ds to, to drop one. But honestly... That almost may help them more than it hurt them. Like, it, and I know it, it's really weird to say this. Melbourne going into the finals, if they lose a game, into the finals undefeated. So, I, I that's a storyline I look at. I'm is there with you. is yep, a, a loss to Melbourne could actually mm-hmm. be blessing in disguise. It could be the biggest thing for Melbourne because then then he, that. We have to be undefeated at the end, and everybody's going to go into the finals carefree because nobody's going to expect them to win. Them play free fun footy, which might actually give. I've them always them, so. No, I think you're you hit the nail on the head right there. I've always felt like it's a good thing to know what it's like to lose, um, because you you can at least see your faults. You can at least see you at what's your worst for that year. And it's easier to assess that. But if you just kind of walk through everyone during the regular season and things might not end up well, you might be able to make it through the playoffs. But once you get to that championship game, that's a different story. Take a look at the Patriots in the mid two thousands, that undefeated team that ended up losing it all in the Super Bowl. Shout out Eli Manning for stopping Tom Brady from getting two more Super Bowls than he would have. Um, that man is a hero. Um, if you are a fan of Gridiron, go ahead, check us out weekly uh, over at the fourthlong.com forward slash NFL. Uh, but let, me, let us know your thoughts on that one. Are the D's beatable or vulnerable? Who do you think they might be able to lose to? How bad are the North Melbourne Ruse? And what is your take on the situation regarding <laughs> uh, beverage there? And also, speak of beverage, what's your favorite? Let us know. Is it high C? Is it Sprite? Is it, I don't know, Coke? I don't know. I'm curious. That's his name always just has me thinking, oh, Coach Drink. I could maybe go for what I mean, maybe a local Australian beer. <laughs> I, I don't know what the names. Yes. It's in, it's probably uh, like a it depends, it, beer it depends on where, like where you're at. I know Melbourne Carlton Draft yeah. is definitely <laughs> a big one. Queens Northern is another one that's big. Cooper's is big in, uh, uh, in Adelaide. I'd have to look. I'm not. 100% sure if there's a regional beer in Perth that, that's that's so, uh, hey, all yeah. I know is that there's beer all um across the land except when you're at the MCG I'm still gonna milk that joke I do not care um but we're gonna hop into a couple of interesting storylines coming up here um I like I said earlier fairly controversial especially and there's there's some people that will die on this hill uh, so we're definitely going to get into it um but first things first leon cameron has informed the gws giants as of about 30 minutes ago of um us being live right now and i guess it would be the morning of thursday there in australia that he is officially resigning from the gws giants um, after this round and first thing I guess especially as a GWS supporter I'm not shocked that they're going to be parting ways of course there's a um, contract news that came out about it recently where they're not going um, they kind of stopped contract um, talks but I'm also kind of surprised I was expecting him to finish out his tenure in G- GWS, I was expecting him to finish out this season. So definitely an interesting that, thing that's going to play into here. And I guess two of the biggest questions is, uh, one, are they going to try to just have a filler coach for the rest of the season or are going to try to bring in one of those names in now? And then also, who are you going to bring in? I guess my kind of thoughts on this one before I go to you, Donnie, is that 
I have zero problem if they just maybe bring up an assistant coach from the team, make them an interim head coach throughout the season, and then wait till the off season um, to go after that your your um, Nathan Buckley to go after your Clarko. Just because, what's the point? The Giants aren't going to be contending for the finals this year. There's no need to rush in to bring that new head coach in. It's better to give them a full offseason to get acclimated to this team so you actually have hope starting next year when you actually have still the Giants still have a chance to compete for the finals next season. So uh, uh, there is that bright side for us supporters. Yay. Let, let's just get this season over with. Sweet damn. <laughs> um, but... Um, and also the the other bright side to that is kind of what I was telling you before we we started um, we went live. Johnny is that I see zero downside to bringing to taking an existing staff member, putting him in the position of head coach, letting them take over the team, letting them take over as, as a true list manager, and just seeing what they can do. If it's that one guy, if you maybe play around with multiple guys on that staff just to see what they can bring to the team. You're playing with house money at this point. There is zero pressure riding on them. It's really just meant, hey, go out there and see what you can do. Because we're not going to be really... There's no expectations at this point. Doesn't It's almost better if they lose games because then you get a higher draft pick. I know we don't want to tank, but... If you lose, you lose, and that's not the that's not the worst thing here. I I think they should pretty much do a tryout, just see what you can do, bring your best, give them a few games each if you really need to. There's no need to rush into to Clark or or Buckley here, and it it's almost better if you don't. It's it's a very interesting kind of um, situation that we find ourselves. As I like you really thought. Cameron will get to the end of the year. He'll walk away. I, I didn't see any way for GWS to want to re-sign him. Like, I thought he'd walk away. He'd finish the season, and then he'd step away and either take another job or take a year off or assistant coach in another club. Do one of those things. Him stepping away now basically tells me to myself is he knew it was over. He knew mm-hmm. – Two or three more rounds, and most likely he was going to get sacked. So get ahead of it. Walk out on your own terms. No, you're not going to make it to the end of the year. Dignity, but with a little bit of pride, and just and step away yourself. So I I, I applaud Leon Cameron for kind of taking the decision away from the club and doing it himself. People like, say, well, he he quit, he resigned. Well, yeah. yes, but he's also in a no-win situation because if means more. Then they may try to resign him. He, who knows if Leon Cameron wants to continue coaching there? You know, first anymore. off, to that point, thank God that they're not going to run that <laughs> risk anymore. There's no more and, Leon Cameron hot streak that could get them resigned. That is only a good thing. <laughs> as, as the GWS, as the GWS fan gives me his honest to God opinion on that one. <laughs> and then, and I the opposite where when he. Uh, where every game that he loses just downgrades him more to the point where he's probably going to get let go in the next few rounds. Or my best case scenario other than that was he gets a dry round. So then the caretaker coach, which a little bit of Australian terms here, the caretaker coach or interim coach he used in the States um, could then have the buy round to teach whatever he's going to change if he changes anything. And then... The by the GWS plays, the caretaker coach takes over for Leon Cameron. Like nothing happened, like nothing changed. So, again, it, it's a very weird round eight, especially with the buy rounds coming up here. It's like I mm-hmm. almost would have thought Leon probably might have tried, but maybe he just he saw no he saw no positive gain in continuing to coach. This gives an assistant coach a chance to take over as caretaker and see if they can make some just to try to. Save a little face, whether they do or don't. Mm-hmm. Again, it's up to me, but I, I, I want to rewind just a tiny bit. Sydney Swan supporter. What Leon Cameron did at GWS is something to be give him a round of applause for because thank yes, you. He was thank given you. I don't, I'm yes, not hating on the man. It. Exactly. Absolutely. Not. He was I, I've been saying that the last couple of weeks. Or, well, he, yeah. he was yeah. the start of it at the start of it, a lot of talent. But he had very few workhorses, so he had a lot of issues of a lot of guys playing me footy. Where it was all about their stats, their goals, their things, and he kind of got him to play more team like 
seasons he really has kind of brought up workman-like mentality and some workman-like players into this club to where it's not all glitz and glam and superstars at the gws giants it's not the superstar club anymore it's a gritty team that can play gritty football at times. stars yes there's still a ton of talent on this roster but unfortunately the gws uh, that the afl kind of set up it's a really good shot at being very good early. It didn't get the one accomplished, and that was a flag. And, and that's that's the one. All because that one himself. infamous kick, right? <laughs> that one kick that cost yeah, you that know about the flag. one infamous. Yeah. So and, and that's <laughs> that's kind of it. So again, Cameron, in all in all, I I applaud Cameron for his work. He did, he did so much. Um, for the GWS Giants, he really has helped establish the club early. Last year, again, he he waved his magic wand last year and, and took a took a, a an average GWS team in the middle of the season and got them into the finals and got them to to uh, a a semifinal. So you got to give the guy credit. He can coach. He just ran into one giant problem: injuries. Inconsistent <laughs> and a lot of superstars. So, uh, comedic genius Donnie, <laughs> and that wasn't even intentional. It was not, in, I was not <laughs> exactly. You're that so. good, don't even think about it. But I uh, thank you for bringing up that great point. It, I definitely do not want to look back on the Leon Cameron tenure with a negative light. I think, given the cards he was dealt, Leon Cameron did a good job as a head coach, but kind of my thoughts over the last couple of rounds is that the the reasons to move on is not because necessarily he's a bad... He's not... Uh, all right, sorry, he hasn't been having the, the best of seasons this year, but I, I'm not going to classify him as a bad head coach. He is not a bad head coach, but... The Giants just need to go in a different direction. This is a crossroads. This is what they're choosing. This is going to be more beneficial for both sides. And I I really do wish Leon Cameron all the best. Everything I've seen from him has been great. It, it's not like he's just a controversial figure as well. He's like just image-wise, he's also been a respectable leader, a respectable head coach. And I have no ill will towards a man. I wish him the best, but the Giants just... They need someone else, you know. That's a new all. voice, and sometimes yeah. happens. Sometimes you just it, a voice grows tired. It's tiresome in the locker room. Sometimes you. And again, it, it's sad, sad how it ends the Cameron era at GWS. But to be completely honest with you, this may be the best. Bring in a new voice. Bring in somebody who maybe is. some is, and who knows? Again, we don't know who this caretaker coach is going to be. What what assistant coach is going to be. We'll probably find that out probably early next week, probably around a podcast. We'll find out what assistant coach gets the caretaker role. And I, and I 100% agree with you. I do not see, Buck. I don't, I don't see Clarko. I don't see any new coach coming in until the end of the Buckley season. Leave his, his nice job right now to go into a, a kind of a crap show with, with the current GWS Giants setup. There's, there's, there's no need well, to put yourself through that. <laughs> Call your games, man. Well, you you could to get your initial. I think you need more time than what he's going to have to be able to get his structures and his. Everything. I honestly, if because I'm heaven forbid I he comes there right now and they do poorly, even with him, that that's not going to be good for the image. You got clean slate for everyone. That, that, that's that's very true. But honest, honest, I'm GW. Be on top of your list. I'll, legitimately, mm. I. Would be getting a yeah. call to Clarko saying, "Hey, we're You're going to coach this no matter what. Guys, this is your job. If you this is your job, if you want it, you let us know." Did that again? We don't know. Will the Gold Coast Suns job come available? I don't know. Will the West Coast Eagles job come available? Which then leaves Adam Simpson without a job. Honestly, Adam Simpson coming to GWS wouldn't be too bad a job either. Consider Simpson has been a very successful coach out in Perth. So, in how does Port Adelaide does, does Port Adelaide rebound? If not, does Kenny Hinkley find himself with a pink slip? Gives you another. Mm -hmm. There's there's still a lot Four of fingers things crossed out there. for a reason. Hawthorne opens up their head coaching position. <laughs> I wouldn't mind that. I doubt Sam Mitchell's going anywhere. But again, you continue with that dream. I can dream. So you can continue can dream. with that dream. <laughs> and you bet I am going to because it's 
it's all we have for this season. So, you know, it, 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 it's just one of those things. And speak of it, maybe being just one of those things, let's go uh, take a live look at the people that are traditionalists and love the hell out of an afternoon grand final and will not budge because they are not having the best of days. This is about the worst news that they can get in their lifetime, or at least that's what they make it out to be when they are on Twitter. But news coming out recently that the 2022 grand final will be making its triumphant return to the MCG at... The Twilight Spot. Donnie, I know uh, our thoughts on this one, especially as Americans, <laughs> while we not may be the target audience, so we understand why they move it. It's a little bit harder for us to watch. I, we did The afternoon timing does play a little bit better. Uh, and unless you're American or Victorian, apparently, you're probably loving the hell out of this news. <laughs> what are your thoughts on this one, though? Well, a few, uh, like a month ago... Lengthy discussion with several Australians, and I mean, I mean, discussion is I, I, as I possibly could telling them. I said, I understand your argument about, what, but I'm going to tell you this is financial dollars from TV rights broadcasting and from corporate sponsors are going to far outweigh the fans yelling and being, pardon my French, <laughs> pissing, bitching, and moaning. Like legitimately, that is the problem that I see. Is like I, I hear everybody say, "Well, the majority of people don't." Well, that's not one hundred percent true. I think it's a major. I think it's a majority in Victoria. Yeah, Victorian. You, you, I know you love football, but there's one thing: you don't own the M's, you don't own the yeah. F, and you don't own football. So, plenty of people in Perth and plenty of people in Adelaide don't want it at 2 30 in the afternoon because it's mid morning late morning game time so it's not as cut and dry as i think and i even saw i even saw a poll on the afl fans association and my favorite kind of point is that they had a thousand votes i'm like that's how well, big's that's australia not, again? <laughs> that's well, that's not exactly a lot i mean it's that's a mil- there's yeah. over a million members in, in in the AFL as a whole. So a thousand. I mean, you're you're. you're and how many of those are Victorian? You, you, yeah. and that's another fact that a, a few people brought up too. Do I understand many people's are on it? There, yes, I understand. Yeah. But let let me let me also kind of retort back to some of them. Well, if if it's a two thirty, you get plenty of time to soak up the victory. It's a night. So what? <laughs> makes you have to go to bed do you have to do anything on sunday and and i don't want to go into religion but i think the good lord will be okay with you missing sunday church the next day if you're out celebrating your grand final win so that's not exactly a great argument hey repaying the prayers you said to get to that win in the first place kids can't go to the twilight or early evening because they have bedtimes it's saturday again why do they have a bedtime on saturday let them stay also up. i'm sorry i don't I think don't the children that have those really things. bedtimes i don't, are... these... I don't <laughs> think those children are the prime audience donnie don't get me wrong but i do not believe that and children and... with early bedtimes are prime afl advertiser audience <laughs> and that's the last one everybody's like victorians are the ones are the ones that are screaming about it I said, is that your TV audience in a t- night grand final are going to be higher in Queensland and in New South Wales, which are not AFL cities. Perth is going to be higher. Adelaide's going to be higher. All the other states in the country are going to have higher rankings when in a twilight and a PM start than Victoria. So I understand why you want to keep it in a traditional spot. And I, and again, I will state this and I stated it in every tweet that I had in these discussions. I wanted it two 30 because it's an 1130 start for me. So it's not We're on your side. Time. We're on your side. So I'm with, <laughs> but the writing's on the wall that for the last few years, the advertiser want it later because they will mm-hmm. get more eyeballs on their product, which will then mean they have more money for ad slots and you're going to get a better tv if your grand final is at a prime time game spot again i 
too many things that are going to be good for the league financially, which with everything the league's going to handle with right now, financially, Mm -hmm. potentially coming through with the the concussion doctor, the AFL trying to expand, the AFL, the AFL W expanding to 18 teams and the players really push, really pushing for trying to get them to become professional. The AFL is going to need a little bit more to be able to afford some of these moves. So me that this is going to be a twilight final. And again, I'm going to say this. If you don't like it, ladies and gentlemen, you better boycott it. And if you don't, you have nobody to blame. You, you did exactly what the AFL knows. You're going to watch the game. You're not going to boycott it. Do boycott it. There's not going to be enough to make enough of a dent to there's I'm i guarantee you there's saying... more people that watch it because it's a night than don't watch it because it's a night probably at least by a tenfold margin as well hey and, all i gotta that's... say is is on this too donnie with the twilight congrats to local fireworks manufacturers and sellers because now you can finally use your products in a way better way better light or lack thereof so they're the real winners yeah, from this I, one aren't they? i think i think the afl the mcg might have a cladding issue so i'm not sure if they can actually shoot fireworks there so i think that's never mind the point there. I, oh, I think I, I, I heard that 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 was that's one i'm not sure if that's 100 true but I, i'd heard that they said i don't think they can actually shoot fireworks off the mcg anymore because uh, of something not 100 quote me on that one but again to to all the australian fans that are watching this again i i 100 understand all of the arguments i want 100% agree with you. I'd better have it at 2.30. I'm a realist when it comes to it. I know what's going to talk and what's going to make the most most sense for the AFL financially and for it going further, and that's a bigger TV on. That's more money when it comes to advertising. The plain and simple truth. Not to grudge you, I am actually 100% you on. It's just... <laughs> we agree. I really... <laughs> I've, I've really come to it and we've seen it. I mean, I mean, the NFL, they're going to, they're going to vote with their pocketbooks, not with what's best for the fans. Bro, imagine here. if the NFL um, had an afternoon Super Bowl. Ain't no way in hell that they actually do that. No freaking way that the NFL ever has an afternoon game unless the end of the world is happening and they want to get in one last quarter before the earth blew up. That's maybe the only time I see that happening here. Oh, the how well, the, the, the rage. Only five million. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, no, we're thinking to the future. So inflation, $100 million commercials for 30 seconds of, of ad time. Oh. oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh. So I get So I, I get I, I stated I stated it and I had a few people say I was crazy and and I'm I'm probably gonna go try to find those tweets and save them and go well this ain't all of this and I and I'm not gonna mean it meanly but I'm it's just the honest and I said it in every tweet I said I just know this is gonna happen I don't need facts because I to Damien Barrett I listen to the AFL and I know what's gonna what's going in the long run I understand the fans go why aren't they doing it to the fans yeah but. The one thing the fans do is the fans are gonna under the fans are gonna come and watch the game because if they don't, then act on the pocketbook. If you don't, which unfortunately most Australians are not gonna skip the grand final, they're gonna take a hit, so they're not gonna see anything wrong with it, and they're just gonna go with it. The AFL does not care about your mean and angry tweets. They care about money and are your tweets making or losing them money probably not so you can just know that your opinion will be ignored by the league but your opinion will not be ignored by us so make sure and make your voices heard <laughs> in the comments uh it's up over on socials on uh instagram and twitter at fourth and long media and we'll definitely reach out to you because we love take a look at your comments a lot of you bring a lot of great insight to it a lot of you guys just like um calling yourself or not using australian lingo that is also okay uh i uh i don't take offense to it you're just kind of a dick, but it's okay. We still love you. <laughs> and it's, I haven't, over the last couple of rounds, I have not been called out for insulting the almighty snag. So, 
haven't gone into hot water with that. I believe, if anything, I see more support for my takes on Vegemite. Um, so I've been pretty impressed by that. <laughs> <laughs> but what we're going to hop into now, guys, before we get into the team of the round and our tips for round nine of the AFL season, it's time to say what the blank. And round eight was no exception to the, any other round this year. I caught myself saying that a lot, especially when I would um, take a look at the final scores and be like, oh, how the blank did that happen? Um, but in fact, this is what the blank. This is a segment <laughs> where we have Donnie being put onto the spot um, as we give him three statements, each of them having a blank at either the beginning, middle, or the end. And it's up to him to fill it in with whatever he so chooses. Of course, let us know your blanks on this one as well. Sound off in the comments or like I said, hiss up on our socials. But Donnie, starting us off, what the blank number one? Blank is the most disappointing team through the first eight rounds. Well, some people would, I know, I, I've heard this question asked to a few people are, because we are eight games in, so we're, we're basically about a third mm -hmm. of the way through the season. Few teams and and them, everybody's right? like, North Melbourne, West Coast. And I go, well, well honestly, if I follow my, if I follow my preseason thing, I had West Coast and North bottom three. So that really a disappointment, disappointment requires expectations. Exactly. So right now, honestly, the, 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 there's two teams that I think are kind of tied, but but I'm gonna pick one out of the mm -hmm. two. Essendon. Essendon right now is my most disappointing team because I saw them in the finals. I saw them progressing and getting better this season, and they have regressed dramatically. Unfortunately, yes, they got a big win over Hawthorne, but again. I, I'm kind of questioning whether Hawthorne is really mm. as they were at the start of the season because I think they I think they caught a couple of teams early, like a Port yeah. Adelaide that was not playing well. So honestly, I just I say yes, and is it because they just a lot got in there? I mean, you even had uh, one well, of the greats of co one of the greats of coaching saying that grand final and flag contender. Being 16th mm -hmm. right now with a 78.3 percentage at this time with only two wins on the trot out of eight. It's it's difficult not to see them as a team. Yes, GWS is there, but I, I thought GWS was going to be an interesting team this year. They could potentially be in the playoff. They could potentially make finals, or they could be a team that slides out just because they have had so much kind of influx there so i'm gonna, I'm gonna say ascendant right now just because of mm -hmm. expectations that i had at the start of the year where i saw west coast and north melbourne both in the bottom five so they're not really that's super fair there i guess as a gw supporter of course they're disappointing as hell but also at the end of the day I can't. I I'm not I'm not super surprised by this one. And like you said, for North, they just weren't that good of a team coming into the season. West Coast, they're battered to hell coming into the season. Uh, I, I guess the one that stands out to me the most as of now, and yeah, you can make the excuse that they are injured. It's the Western Bulldogs. Just because, come on, you were a grand final runner-up last season, and right now you're sitting at 3-5, and five, and those losses have not been pretty. Definitely going to be some ground to make up. Definitely a few teams you could do. So your poor Allied also not out of the conversation as well. Um, but going from one side of the spectrum to the other, we're going from disappointment to hope, Donnie. So, statement number two. The scariest bottom 12 team is blank. And of course, the bottom 12 um, includes St. Kilda, Richmond, Collingwood, the Doggies, Adelaide, Hawthorne, and you really don't have to include anyone else, maybe besides the Dons. <laughs> maybe the Crows? I don't know. <laughs> Let, let's uh, be honest. <laughs> I, 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 love the, I love the way you phrase this question because it, it does open up a couple of teams that I... I at the start. Um, <laughs> team. Honestly, I think it's Port Adelaide. Because Port Adelaide is getting healthy and they're starting to play much better in a row. I, I think the West the Bulldogs is kind of the opposite. Mm -hmm. Richmond, I want to put a ton of stock into a win over a Collingwood team that I still think is. I, I'm. I don't know if this is a Collingwood team that's going to be for finals or is going to start dipping down the the ledger this year. 
Richmond is a team again. Yes, it was so fantastic. 100%. That's the end of the game. It's nothing but good for the AFL. But I think Port mm-hmm. is the scariest team because if they get on a roll again, they've got a leader. There's Charlie Dixon is coming back. Grazio Fantasia is coming back. A lot of things there. And they're winning games top top ruck. So they're doing it with a backup ruckman and a midfield that many people were saying earlier this season it was old, couldn't do what they needed to do, and weren't going to help them win. Well, the Lions just come back and continue and come back absolutely insane. And then you also look at it too. It's like Travis Boak is continuing his solid play. Yes, he is. And they, they, and, they, and the best part is they've taken a butters and Rosie and flung them into the midfield a little, which I think is really kind of given them pizzazz out of the mid that went over St. Hilda Kanagata, Kanagata, the proverbial back, shall we say. And they've started to kind of, in, uh, play much, much better footy, and they're getting winnable games for winning them, so, which is going to give confidence, which is going to make them much more dangerous as they the better teams in the league as this season goes on. So I think the most dangerous team is close Richmond just because they're in that bottom 12. Mm-hmm. Two that I see with them is, are they going to be consistent? That's my biggest thing there. I think that's a great pick right there. If we also want to take a chat over on YouTube, um, Ditch says Essendon will beat the Swans on the weekend. Oh, coming for the Swan, he's there, Donnie. And, uh, you know, like you said earlier, that is going to be a close game. Before we went live, we we're talking about our tips. That is going to be a close game. Definitely want to stick till the end to hear our full thoughts on that one because, woo. Ooh, might be another trap game on deck. Um, but Captain, it's a last I, I statement. Think, I'll, I'll go with yeah. it. I, I don't Small think preview. he's jumping off too high a limb there. I think this is going to no. be one heck of a game because the Swans, the Swans have kind of regressed a little bit. Their inexperience has really... And, and the, it, does, does Hickey come back? Does he come back in for because they really got dominated. I think it really put Sydney under disadvantage. I think it's really trash talking. I think it's legitimate. If Essendon can play blowing no care footy like they did against Hawthorne, they're a dangerous danger. But the issue I see with them is in the reason, and again, this is nothing against Essendon. It's just that I wanted them to play like this the entire season and they haven't. And that's the most frustrating part for me. I said last year, Essendon was one of the teams I loved watching. I thought they were the most fun to, to keep an eye on because they were exciting. They played fast footy. Again, I want Anthony McDonald tipping Woody back. He is an absolutely fantastic player. So he's insane. It, it may be trash talk, but for me, it's not because I, no, I mean, I'm I legitimately sure. as a Swans fan, I'm worried. Essendon is not an easy yeah. out. So, so oh, no matter what my tip is, I still go in this one a little worried because this is not an easy game. No, I, I really don't blame you right there. I back to back kind of tough games for the Sydney Swans here, but uh, statement number three for what the blank is that the blank will drop out of the top eight come finals. Just taking a look at the current finals teams um, being put into this, uh, which of course one to eight the D's, Frio, Brisbane, Carlton, Geelong, Sydney, St. Kilda, and Richmond. But Donnie, fill in the blank. Who this this is fun because I look at it and if, if you prefer I'm playing it, I'm I know I'm Swan's fan, but I could I could say that Sydney falls out of the final mm. because it, Richmond's playing better again. Richmond's it's like I hate saying they'll drop yeah. out because they're an eighth. Say kill that I think into the D's again are the D's this year. So but it's really I think the the bottom three Sydney Swans and Kilda Richmond are the three most likely because it is very hard once you start getting in fifth first, and third to lose two, three, four consecutive games to fall out of the finals. Carlton has Carlton is the only one not for right now that I, I'm a little bit we- weary with them just because of the fact that they have been so ugly defensively. And then Harry McKay's out. So one of their talismans front is That's gone. a tough injury, man. 
Exactly. And he's week, so it'll be very fun mm-hmm. to see how that goes. So uh, those would be the four teams that I'd look at right now. Like I said, just off form, I, I have to go Sydney. And, and I hate saying that as, as a Swan supporter. I hate saying that, but <laughs> I'm, I'm a real I'm a real. I'm not going to sit here over myself and go, there's no way. I, I, I think Sydney has a kind of winning enough games to get, stay in the finals, but I think so. Sydney is the, is the most vulnerable. Most currently. Absolutely. And if you take a look at the chat, uh, thank you, AJ, for joining us here. He says that the Tigers will drop out of the finals. They beat Collingwood and everyone thinks they're quote back. And <laughs> yeah, no, you, and, you summed and- it up. Pretty damn well. And I kind of said the same thing. Like, again, this yeah. is a Collingwood team that, again, we, we really don't know. Are they good or are they, are they okay? Like, and that's the issue I run into. It's just that it's, it's kind of the Tiger Sea. Well, they get, they get big wins, but they get big wins against teams that I don't think are, are as dangerous as people kind of make out. Again, mm-hmm. Collingwood from some early games that were winnable, and they won them. Playing this. So, Again, still, still left to be played. So a lot of these, a lot of these kind of fill in the. I could say something, and this this eight could flip in the next couple of weeks. Sydney could run on a get a five streak, get into the top four, and Carlton could lose four. And Carlton's down in seventh or eighth. Richmond could lose their next four, fall completely out of it. St Kilda could win again. We just don't know. And <laughs> I, of course, I. I Things there's so much merit to it because that's just the way the season has been. As soon as you think you have a whew, one curveball and the whole thing changes. Carlton, Harry Mackay, Richmond mm-hmm. does Dusty with another great game. Again, it's not a he's one of those impact guys. When he gets the footy, he makes an impact. He's not a 40 possession guy with 14 kicks and 30 handballs and doesn't do much damage. When he gets the footy, he gets it 20 times. He has eight score involvements, two goals, and and, and several and and several goal assists. So that that's how Dusty is. So it, Dusty can make that giant impact, but Dusty, and I say this to the to the Tigers fans, Dusty can disappear at times, especially in home away game, home and away games. Mm-hmm. He'll disappear. Like if somebody tags him just right, he's non-existent in the game, which can affect Richmond as well. So I'm agent. You're Absolutely. completely right on that. It, I'm I I hate giving this tiger our back their eighth place. So one loss and we'll see out of the finals. Exactly, we'll see with the, with the tags. Um, but also to your comment talking about the latest GWS news. Yes, uh, we took a look at that. I think about probably about twenty minutes ago at this point in the stream. So I mean, if you go back that little bit, definitely give our thoughts on Leon Cameron. Um, essentially, big news. Um, it's interesting where they go, if they're going to pursue a coach immediately or if they're going to go with the caretaker for now. Um, yeah, just jump back a little bit there. Um, check that out. I'll be keeping my eyes on that press conference as they go live here in a second just to see if uh, maybe they announce anything to go along with it. If it's just a goodbye press conference, um, I guess we'll see. But what we're going to hop into now is before we cap things off with our tips round nine, it's time for the only list that matters across the Pacific Ocean. There is only one that reigns supreme, and that is Coach Donnie's team of the round. So, Coach, let us know what you got because yet another. I mean, what for forwards? I'm just going to guess you have to have at least four goals this year, uh, this round as well to make the make the list. Yep. The only the only yep. thing, the only forward <laughs> that made my list that did not kick four is my bench my bench person my bench forward, and they kicked at least three. Again, this, this is a big year for this is a big year for forwards with big bags. So it, it's been a fun year. It, it's definitely made my job picking my forwards easy. The fun part sometimes is because the defender sometimes. Yeah. Interesting stat to keep an eye on. I like looking at intercept intercept possessions because I know usually that's a really good stat for for defenders. But occasionally you get a defender that pops up and kicks a goal and makes an impact. So I, I throw them in there. So here we go. Team of the week. We start again with the defenders. I am a coach. Defenses win championships. So we'll start. We'll start off with Fremantle's Jordan Clark, the Geelong transfer, making an impact with 23 dis- a goal, a behind, three intercept possessions, five score involvement, seven marks, three tackles, and 473 meters gained. We jump to Richmond, who just has a rotating door when it comes to my team of the week. They are 
a defender that finds his way in. We start with Nathan Broad. 23 disposals, 10 intercept possessions, a goal assist, 7 score involvements, 5 marks, and 200 meters game. I give credit where credit is due. Gold Coast David Swallow. 24 disposals, a goal a behind, 8 score involvements, 7 6 points, 400 this is Harry Perryman. 25 disposals, 7 intercept possessions, 5 marks, 3 154. Just for you, Dyson Happel. 25 disposals, <laughs> possessions, 4 score fall, and 56 meters gained. Rounding out the a little bit this round. It's Jordan. Three disposals, a goal, 7 in possession, 7 score and fall, and it's 10 marks. And 570. We jump to the engine room that is the midfield. And some. For this one, we start off with the Western Bulldogs. Smith. Mm. Proposals, two goals, a behind, six score involvements, three clearances, four tackles, and 178 meters gained. Yes, Dusty was back, but I have to give Chai Bolton from the Richmond Tigers had a heck of a game as well with 21 disposals, two goals, two behinds, a goal assist, six score involvements, five marks, three clearances. And 423 meters gained. Again, Ditch, I'm giving Essendon some credit here. Essendon's <laughs> Darcy Parrish. 30 puzzles, a goal of behind, three intercept possessions, 13 score involvement, six marks, six clearances, seven tackles, and 442 meters gained. One heck of a performance by Brisbane's Hugh McCluggage. 26 disposals. Four goals, three intercept possessions, three three goal and three goal assists, ten score points, four marks, three clearances, ten tackles, and three hundred and fifty three meters gained. I have this guy every time he plays, he makes my team of the week, and that's Carlton <laughs> Patrick Cripps. Thirty five oh, disposals, man. two goals, two goal assists, twelve score involvements, five marks, ten clearances, seven tackles, and three hundred and seventy five meters gained. Now here's a little bit of a surprise. We had a down week for Rexman. Not have a lot of mm. massive performances, but I gotta give this young man some credit. He had a heck of a game. Max Lynch, twelve yes. disposals, two goals, a behind, three interceptions, a goal assist, six score involvements, five, four marks, three clearances, and eighteen hitouts for the Rockman from the Hawk. Mm -hmm. Performance. These are the guys putting it big sticks. Here we go, Western Bulldog. 15 disposals, four goals, two behinds, a goal is score involvement, six marks, and 227 meters gained. The Richmond Tiger, Tom Lynch, 25 disposals, six goals, a behind, 14 score involvement, 11 marks, and 426 meters gained. A guy that I think GWS would love to have back currently, and that's Geelong's Jeremy Cameron. 12 disposals, five goals, two behinds, eight score involvement, seven marks, and 200. 23 meters gained and as well as Essendon played this gentleman really was one of the reasons why they won and that's Essendon 16 disposals 6 7 score involvements 8 marks and 372 meters gained Brisbane's Charlie Cameron 10 disposals 4 goals behind 7 score involvements 6 marks and 269 meters gained and then up up with Harry Mackay down, and that's Char and Carlton's Charlie Kernow. No. 21 goals, three behinds, 15 score involvements, 10 marks, and 609 meters gained. We jump to the bench here. Start off with a defender who got a lot of action because the West Coast can't keep it out of their defense. <laughs> and that's Shannon of the West Coast Eagles. 27 disposals, eight score and eight intercept positions. Eight marks, four tackles, and 413 meters. The midfield, I, I know, I think he played a little bit. I give him a mid. Albans Angus. 31 disposals, a goal, 11 intercept possessions, four score involvements, 13 marks, and 476 meters gained. Comes out of Frio, and that's Big Sean Darcy. 17 disposals, a goal, six score involvement, seven marks, four clearances, three tackles, 42 hitouts, and three meters gained. And we end with the four. Jeremy Finlayson. 14 disposals, three goals, a behind, nine score involvement, seven marks, and 11. That, ladies and gentlemen, is my team of the week. A very interesting.
week this week with getting several guys in multiple spots on the shows you some big time impacts these players in some of these games so uh, a fun week uh, to put this one together i love it um i honestly i look forward to that every round um i definitely don't keep hopes that any of my gws guys are going to make the list um they gotta play a little bit better for that (laughs) one but you know uh, (laughs) it it really is what it is at that point but we're going to cap things off here with of course how we always like to do it and that is with our round nine tips so uh, die and i both coming off of a decent round last week i I went seven two um if the sydney swans didn't screw me over it would have been a little bit better but you know i can't be too mad (laughs) i'm just just mad that i didn't gain any ground (laughs) well i I know i know we haven't discussed it so i think i think since we're our tips let, okay. let's update everybody on the tip rankings as of right now let's do it let's so do my, it. Co- my co-host for coach has the sports corner and very good friend and, and fellow player for the des moines roosters brad croston currently leads the tipping competition there's only four in this so it's not a, <laughs> not a big one three correct answers with only 19 misses ross is in second as we speak with 40 three losses yours truly at 47 and 25 and then a good work friend of mine who make it forward to make it a little bit more interesting 42 and 30 11 brad so had a four game lead on ross a six game lead on myself and on my friend zach so that is how we go in two round nine there we go ross. i like pick and see if we can Oh, it's going to be tough to pick up those four games, especially <laughs> this round, because really, like, I didn't We're even see Brad's tips. Not... I haven't seen your tips. Time to do it. You just, just, t- just got to get one or two games here and there, and you can catch exactly. up. You got plenty I'm of not time sure if we do that this round, because I feel like we're going to pick the same teams <laughs> pretty much damn near the whole, <laughs> for the whole round. <laughs> it's kind of... It, there's, there's, a, there's, a there's a couple that might be... There's a couple... This first one yeah. could be interesting to see how some people go. At least, at least in the tipping competition that I'm in, the team that I tipped it is actually the underdog, at least in the tipping competition here mm-hmm. between the Collingwood Magpies and the Western Bulldogs. I'm tipping the pies just because. I'm, oh, let's go. Me too. I'm, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'm tipping the pies in this one. It's, it's because I'm not sure whether Tim English 100%. I'm still, Bond is coming back. I just, I, I don't know how 100% he's going to be. I think the Pies, we got a little bit of a reality check last week. I, I think they're going to play better footy. I'm just, uh, this back and forth just because of some of the issues that, that that have kind of went through the doggies camp over the last couple of weeks. So I'm going to tip the Pies in this one. But I know that this may be going a little bit out on the limb, a little bit considering the doggies currently are the favorite, at least in the tipping competition that I am looking at mm-hmm. currently percent of the vote there so i hear you this right is, now uh, are tipping collingwood as well this is only underdog i'm going with this round so obviously i i guess i'll cap this is my underdog a tip of the of the round like i always like to have um i really wasn't going to choose any other underdog besides collingwood just because it goes over the moment the, even the, even if it is an optus you know what i was thinking i was the optus west coast eagles there is nothing like absolutely not um if if they somehow beat the the d's i am okay being wrong because look at these odds i think we saw 14 dollars odds last round a buck oh one for the melbourne d's the west coast eagles 17 dollars on the money oh man what a margin Oh boy! Oh um, boy! That that one's gonna be fun. so. Uh, so we pretty, do we not. Pretty... If you got actually like ten bucks hanging around, I guess you might as well tip West Coast. <laughs> just to see, oh. just to see, just just to see. No, but I'm going with Collingwood, not because I trust Collingwood more, just because I don't trust the the doggies at this point. Um, it's one of those kind of tips where I tip the team that I hate the least. Um, not always, not always the best one with that one. Uh, before we get into Hawthorne and Richmond, um, AJ, drop another uh, comment in the chat here. GWS to beat Carlton this week, send the coach off with a win, and I certainly hope so. Let's. Uh, I guess I probably should just wait till we got to the G Davis tip. Now that I think about it, screw it. I'm just going to jump ahead uh, to one of the last games of the round. G- GWS and Carlton taking place at Giant Stadium. Man, just imagine if the Giants could win one last game for Leon at home. 
Unfortunately, I don't think that's going to happen. Carlton is, is, is just, at bottom line, a better team than GWS is. I hate how GWS looked last round. I hate how they looked most of the season. I would love if they could win it for Leon. I'm not counting on it. I just, if they could give them a good game, positive, a win, you might be asking for a little bit much. Donnie, your thoughts? Uh, when, when, I saw, when I saw Cameron was blocking away, usually you do get this bump. You, you get the bump. You want to send coach off. Happened before. Mm-hmm. Um, Clark getting sent off, at least for the draw. He didn't get a win, but at least got it. He, go he out, didn't lose. Out, lose <laughs> uh, the Scott the Scott brother who's coaching North Melbourne went out on a win. It, it, it's, it's a great story. Thinking even with Carlton, it, it's going to be interesting to see how just comes to the without pit net and Bruce and, and Braden the lighting up for G in the rock. So it, it is my only thing that this is the game I look at change happens. I'm a little bit more I'm a little bit more keen to look at this one. I'm still gonna tip Carlton, but this is my if I see an upset this this round um Besides the besides the one that I did tip with calling with West the Western Bulldogs, this is the one I see the upset. This is yeah. GWS gets that bounce from the Oz kind of Leon. show it too. I, but I, I'm going to tip Carlton. But that is the upset. That is the upset game I look okay. at going. If, if I'm going to tip an upset, besides that, that's the, I think it's a strong possibility because and he's going to get these guys up. Mackay not playing, Pitnett not playing, Bruce playing really well for GWS. The the ingredients are real. Mm-hmm. and um, AJ definitely makes a good point here. Team seeking to get uh, up for a new slash even coach because Collingwood was able to do it against Melbourne last year. Definitely a great way to send off Buckley. And a little bit of news coming is while well, we're on GWS topic, a little bit of news coming from the Paris conference is that it seems science seem to point that um, assistant coach Mark McVeigh will be taking over. Um, for Leon Cameron after this round. Um, it, it, so it definitely seems like that's def, uh, something they were going to roll with. Not complaining too much. I um, guess we'll wait and see how that one goes. But uh, going back up the list of uh, tips here, we're going to take a look at Hawthorne in Richmond. Um, I would enjoy tipping Hawthorne in this one. It would certainly piss a lot of people off, especially those uh, Tigers fans. But... I don't see it happening. I like where Richmond's at right now, and I like where Destiny Martin's at as well. I, I'm 100. Yeah, I'm gonna tip Richmond on this one just because I, Hawthorne again. They're having the fades, and, and that that is never a good thing, especially with a Richmond team. They, they usually tend to play really well. again. Is this the same Richmond team that we saw in the Dynasty 17 and, and all the flags? No, this is a different Richmond team. It's not, it's not the same. But I just of Hawthorne losing games late. They just seem mm-hmm. a little bit. In a little bit of this, I think Sam experimenting for the future because he's he's not using Mira's Tommy Mitchell's in the midfield bounces as much as he was previously. So I, I'm gonna tip Rich in this one just because I think Hawthorne is still kind of experimenting for the future. So I'm not sure if they're looking at this season as being one where they're gonna be competing for a final spot course um and now we got the next one we got the streaking um port adley power definitely making a bit of a turn around since the start of the season on five they have now right off three straight wins and they take on the north melbourne ruse who um they haven't looked great recently uh so i'm tipping port i just i'm not gonna tip i don't think i'm gonna be tipping north the rest of the season <laughs> even when they play west coast <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go port for this one too. I, I just I, I think port is playing much better North Mel. Fortunately, it's just they, they're just everything that can go wrong is going wrong for them. Fortunately, and that's kind of the thing that really is hurting them. And so port yep. is getting a North Melbourne team perfect to where uh, it won't shock me if if Charlie Dixon actually gets a week rest just to be sure that uh, he is ready and cherry ripe for season i think they can get away with being without charlie dixon up front 
I think so too. That the, if you're going to rest them, definitely a good one to do it. Um, next game at Marvel Stadium, we got the Geelong Cats against the St. Kilda Saints. Now, I think this game might be closer than what the um, tipping odds might be displaying at this point. 75 going with Geelong, 75% going with Geelong. Um, but Geelong should be able to come out of this one with the win. St. Kilda has been good, not great recently. And, Ge- and Geelong's offense has been. Has been going, you know, I, unless it was against Frio, which was still a well-played game. I like the machine that's coming after Long right now. I'm going to attempt Long, but this is one of those. This is a little frightening because St. Kilda is a team. They've got a little. Mm-hmm. And, and Geelong is a little bit of headaches with this change of ball movement. So I, I think that's one that I kind of look at and I go, this this is kind of got some of the recipe for a, an upset, especially considering does Geelong have a viable rock off? Facing Patty Ryder and Rowan Marshall, which is a, a dangerous combination sometimes. But I just think the experience that Geelong has, I think, to be able to help them even at Marvel Stadium, which is very much prepped for what St. Kilda likes to do. So I'm going to tip the, the this one, but I, I'm a little leery because the Saints, they're deaf right for an upset here. I think so too. Uh, speaking about upsets, I think you also might have to put uh, an upset alert on the Sydney Swans and the Essendon Dons taking here at the Sydney uh, Cricket Grounds. 92% of tippers going with the Swans. I am as well. But I'm, man, if the Swans have another horrible first half, let alone second quarter, like they're really good at doing this season, it might be a long night. I'm 100% with you as a. Terrifies me. This is absolutely terrifies me because this is a messing team that's got momentum, they've got some confidence, mm-hmm. and they've got some weapons that can do some damage. But I also look at it too is is that I think horses guys by the scruff of the neck, he's gonna shake them, he's gonna go, hey, get your heads right. You're just making mistakes that we haven't made before. I think they're gonna come out, I think they're gonna come out red hot. I think this could be one of those where kind of shakes away the last couple of weeks and comes out hot if they come out flat yes i am terrified that essendon can run right <laughs> over this and run i'll see the shot. second quarter the, might might tell you the result of this game i 100 agree. the half, halftime score could be massive in this if sydney is down more than three goals it is danger it is danger will robinson it is danger. <laughs> uh for your sake um i i I hope that Sydney pulls off for my take wise. I hope Sydney pulls off. Um, AJ says, I don't believe in the Bombers. Saints will get up. Um, I guess only time will tell. I wouldn't put a whole lot of promise into that just because knowing Sydney. But if they could just keep it cl- at least close heading to the second half, definitely going to have a lot of hope there. But the uh, last three games that we have to tip. I think they're pretty straightforward. Brisbane and Adelaide, Fremantle and Gold Coast, Melbourne and the West Coast Eagles. I guess the only game in here I would have a little bit of hesitancy is Gold Coast and Frio, just because Gold Coast is that trap game kind of team. But I'm taking the favorites in each one of these. Brisbane, Frio, Melbourne, call it good. I'm with you on that 100%. I, yeah. I think Brisbane, <laughs> Brisbane against Adelaide team. The only thing that scares me a little bit is Adelaide plays the Adelaide Oval very, very well. And Brisbane is down to their fourth string full for full string fourth string full forward because Dan McStay is down, Dan Hare is down, and Hipwood still is back from his injury. I think there's enough talent that Hagen can move a few of the magnets, he can change a few things. Mm-hmm. I think he'll be okay. But actually, I think that's the danger game. That's the danger game of this three because I think Sean Darcy neutralizes wits enough Gold Coast Rio game. And I think Frio has been playing super well, really good. I just, I see Frio playing really, really well in that game. I mean, that's going to be a bloodbath if Melbourne actually plays decent footy <laughs> legitimately. They don't even have to play great footy. And that's going to be a bloodbath the way it's been going. So actually, I, of those three, I think Adelaide is the scary is the scarier game for Brisbane because, again, they're a young team. And because a young team, sometimes they can get up for a big, big game like this and completely flip this game on its head. So I'm going to tip Brisbane, but Adelaide, keep on it. That, that could be a fun one for the Lions, especially after the Dan's Day injury. 
Absolutely. And ooh, there it is. Would you believe if I told you AJ was a D's fan? You know what, man? Um, if that's the case, he says go D's. So I'm assuming you're you're a supporter. You could of course confirm that. Um, congrats <laughs> to you. Um, because you actually have some hope. I guess you would have loved our comments earlier in the show here um, that they're not even playing their best footy. Uh, but yeah, if um, they don't beat the Eagles by at least 50, I'm going to be disappointed in this team. <laughs> Uh, of course, I think that might be saying the bar too low for them as well. To come to think of it, gosh, man, yeah, what a team! I, it'll be what a like, team that these are! What a team that Eagles are! Oh man, but our tips for could the round uh, that could be a bloodbath. Even if even if Melbourne is at seventy five percent, that could be a bloodbath because that's just how good Melbourne is. I, I'll hope for a bloodbath just because I I. I'm a horrible person, <laughs> so we're gonna we're, we're gonna definitely see what happens over at Optus Stadium. Who knows, Donnie? It's the, the Optus Stadium Eagles. They're going to win this game, right? We have to tip them. Oh man, that uh, that run might be coming to a hard end here uh, once they lose by a, a hundred. But those are our tips for round nine, and that's just about to wrap it for us for our round eight breakdown of the AFL season. Um, thank you so much if you joined us, whether it live, special shout out to you, AJ. You've been amazing. Can't wait to see you next week um, as well. Same time, same place. Uh, for all those tuning in right now on the um, on the uh, podcast version, you guys are the best. Thank you so much for taking some time every day to tune in. Even if we're on in the background, you're still giving us a play in the download, so that's really all that matters. Um, <laughs> make sure to catch us live if you can next week. If not, no worries. We do appreciate the heck of you, but um, let us know your thoughts. We went over a lot of stuff here. Reacting to the Leon Cameron news, what do you guys think? What's going on with the MCG Twilight spot? Um, who's on the hot seat? And which team actually, um, which bottom 12 team has the most hope? coming up to this year's finals but coach we're going to cap things off with your thoughts in one word or phrase on the leon cameron experience um for the most part successful um yeah. brand yes i many detract and say oh, talent why didn't he win two or three flags it's true, but my also retort is, especially coming from a coach's background, sometimes when you get all that talent, you don't have the people that are going to put in the work. So uh, mm -hmm. you don't just, just because you're talented does not mean that you're going to win a flag. And yeah. I think his, his coaching brilliance kind of came out at the, towards the end of his tenure when a lot of the talent started to kind of seep away and he had to get grunt guys. He had to get workhorse guys that. They weren't first and second round draft picks. They weren't superstars. They were the the take your lunch back hard lunch, take your lunch box hard hat type of players. So, mm -hmm. I in my opinion, Leon Cameron's tenure there was for me. I like that. I think so too. Um, especially coming from his press conference, the quotes like I've been in the game for 34 years straight, but you never say never. Um, if this is it for Leon Cameron, I certainly hope that the Giants are able to somehow send him off into the sunset. But at the least, um, I just hope that he has a fantastic, a um, little bit of well-deserved time off, spent some time with his family. And, you know, I, I just hope that especially Giants fans, that we only look at, on his legacy is a positive one in the greater Western Sydney um, instead of a negative one. Super happy for what he's done for the club. And I'm really, I think it's going to be good for either team. But ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning to a round eight breakdown. We can't wait to see you after the chaos after round nine because a lot of these games seem like they're easy to tip. So of course that just means that it's going to all blow up in our face and it's going to be a gigantic shit show. We'll see you next round. <laughs>